Hey Mech Warriors, Jonathan here at Night Knowledge. There are 7 new mechs and 50 new variants for the existing mechs in the new DLC for Mech Warrior 5, Heroes of the Inner Sphere. The burning question you may have is, are these new mechs worth it? Well in today's video we'll be looking at each mech in depth to see what they're all about. Let's get started. So the DLC has two new media mechs, one heavy mech, and four assault class mechs. We'll start off by looking at the Vulcan medium mech, which is 40 tons with above average speeds of 97 kilometers per hour. They have nice thin arms and torsos, but unfortunately those tiny arms mean smaller weaponry in, in, in them. All Vulcans have jump jets and they have space in the legs for ammo as well. Looking at the 2P variant, this is a support mech essentially with countermeasures, uh, but very limited weaponry. So in terms of use, I wouldn't even really even look at it. We then come to the 2T. The 2T has a large right torso ballistic slot but then a small ballistic slot in the left arm, a small energy slot in the right arm, and a medium energy slot in the left torso. So kind of weird. The 5T has four medium energy slots, three in the right torso and one in the left torso. So it's kind of like a hunchback, but skinnier, and but still weird because it has one small ballistic in the left arm and one small energy slot in the right arm. The Vulcan has a hero variant, the BL um, for Bloodlust. It was driven apparently by Sandra Stoverson, a commander of the Lyran Commonwealth of the 12th Arcturan Guards. It's a beautiful mech with uh, four small missile slots, one in the right torso, left torso, center torso, and head. Remember, small missile slots can equip either SRM-2s or 4s, or the LRM-5s. It has two small ballistic slots uh, in the left arm, and one medium energy, and one small ballistic in the right arm. This is a fantastic mech. We'll look at the Dervish next, which is a 55-ton medium mech. It has, they're all 81 kilometers per hour speed, all jump jet capable, but their legs are filled with those jump jet jets, so you can't put ammo in them. Looking at the 6M first, we have one large missile slot in the right torso and left torso, one medium energy slot, and one small missile slot in both the left and right arm. The Dervish 7D is exactly the same as the 6M, but has medium missile slots in both arms instead of small slots. The Dervish has a hero variant, the FR for Frenzy. It removes the energy slots and is pure missiles. One large missile slot in the right torso and left torso, one medium missile slot in the right arm, and one small missile slot in the left arm. For people like myself who loves Kintaros, this might be a great alternative, although of course you'd have to try to find this hero variant. I hope you're finding this video useful so far. Feel free to support my channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing this video with your friends. Onto the sole hero mech from the DLC, we have the Champion. It is a fat 60 ton heavy mech uh, that doesn't have a hero version. Starting with the 1N, it has one large ballistic slot in the right torso, two center torso medium energy slots, and two engine heat sinks. In the left torso, we have two medium energy slots and one medium missile slot. I don't know why, but the 1N2 variant is exactly the same as the 1N version. 
The Champion 1NB variant has a right torso large ballistic slot, a left torso large energy slot, and two engine heatsink slots. Finally, the Champion 2N variant is like the 1N and the 1N2, it just has different armament. Remember the Champions, they have space in the legs for ammo and they have no jump jets in any variant. We'll look at Assault Mechs now and you'll notice that Assault Mechs range in speed anywhere as slow as 32 kilometers per hour to usually 64 kilometers per hour. What's special about the Charger is that you're going to find that they are not only on the top end of 64 kilometers, but you're also going to find uh, variants that top out at 81 kilometers per hour, meaning that the Charger is one of the fastest assault mechs that you can use. Looking at the 1A1 variant first, this is an energy boat. It has one medium energy slot in the right torso, left torso, head, and left arm. The right arm has a large energy slot and a buttload of engine heat sinks. If you're unaware, uh, engine heat sinks are just dedicated hard points that fits both double and single heat sinks. The Charger 1A5 variant has a right torso, large ballistic slot, one medium energy slot in the head and center torso two medium missile slots in the left torso and remember medium missile slots can hold up to SRM6s or LRM10s and it has two engine heat sinks. The Charger 3K is a jump jet capable assault mech with a right torso large missile slot, one medium energy slot in the right torso, left torso and left arm and has one large energy slot in the right arm and it has once again lots of energy heat sinks like the 1A1. Finally, the Charger N7 is the hero variant. N7 is for number 7. It has a, apparently supposed to in lore have a slower engine meaning more armor and a laser in the head. Uh, it has a right torso, one large energy slot, one medium energy slot, and in the head, another medium energy slot. The left torso has a large energy slot, one medium energy slot in the left arm and right arm, and the jump jets fills up the legs. We go now to the Corsair. It is an assault mech with one variant only at 95 tons and with a max speed of 48.6 kilometers per hour. Supposedly referred to as a Franken mech, these are cobbled together out of Hero and Assault mechs. The PVT Hero mech version has one large ballistic slot in the right arm and right torso. The right torso also has a medium missile slot, once again, hold that is for LRM 10s and SRM 6s. And the left torso has two large energy slots. The Corsair has no jump jets. On to the Hamamoto Chi assault mech. It's an 80 ton assault mech with no hero variants, no jump jets, and uh, they all top out at 64.8 kilometers per hour in terms of speed. The 26T has one large missile slot in the right and left torso, and one large energy slot in the right and left arm. The 27T is basically the same as the 26T. The 27W has a right torso medium ballistic slot, one large energy slot in both the right and left arm. And our last assault mech that we'll talk about today is the Marauder II. It's obviously an assault mech at 100 tons and no hero variants with a top speed of both 48.6 kilometers per hour. The 4A variant has one large energy slot in the right torso, right arm, left arm. It has one medium energy slot in the right and left arm. Three jump jet slots with room 
for ammo for, say, chem weapons. The Marauder 5A is exactly the same as the 4A version, but has a medium ballistic slot in the right torso instead of a large energy slot. So those are the seven new mechs that you'll find in the new DLC for Mech Warrior 5, Heroes of the Inner Sphere. As a quick review, the Corsair is a unique assault mech that uses large slots only. The Vulcan is a thinner Kintaro with many options. The Charger is possibly one of the fastest assault mechs. The Hatamoto Chi is a unique shaped head assault mech which is energy heavy the dervish is a very nice medium missile boat option the champion is a balanced heavy mech with a unique center torso shape and finally the marauder ii is an upgraded fan favorite assault mech i hope this video helped you out to figure out which mechs you should be gunning for, which ones you should be looking for. Uh, you can do the same as well if you go to multiplayer and select instant action. You can look at all the mechs the same way that I did here today. But thank you very much for joining me today. Check out the rest of my channel for other videos on Mech Warrior 5, video games, board games, and other fun things. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.